And now our pastor and founder, Evangelist Richard Daniel Hinton. Bless your heart. We're appreciative and we're grateful to the God of our salvation for being here again on the scene tonight and for those beautiful songs that have gone up before God. If my people, which are called by my name, would just humble themselves and pray. What was that first song? It escapes me now. The, will, the safest place. Did you hear what I said? In the whole wide world is in the will of God. And if you in the will of God, you will humble yourself and pray. And when you pray till you can pray, it'll make you stretch out. Oh, you'll stretch out. You'll stretch out. Oh, God's word. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Those of you that are sick, the afflicted, the suffering, the shut in, God is still on the throne. And whatever you have faith in him to do, he's still what you take him to be. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to lose heart. You don't have to turn coward, for the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we'll reap if we faint not. This is God's guarantee that if you just don't cave in, if you just don't lose heart, you will reap, you will gain the inevitable triumph. Oh, thank God, I love him for that. There's a lot of sick and afflicted people that's listening to this broadcast as well as this telecast. And I want to cause you to hope again. Life haven't lost its meaning. The darkest hour is just before dawn. And I want you to hold on and hang in there. I feel something will be said in this message, in this service, on this evening. To inspire you and to cause you to hope again. For there is word from the Lord. Oh, help is on its way. If you can just hang in there a little while longer. Come on, let's praise him, everybody. Thank God. Come on, let's give him the glory. Let's give him the glory. Thank God. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Father. You may be seated. Our text is found. Our text is found in the book of Matthews, the eleventh chapter, the twelfth verse, and in the book of Luke, the sixteenth chapter, <clears throat> and the sixteenth verse. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. Luke 16, 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached. And every man presseth into it. Look your neighbor in the face and catch him by the hand. And tell them, neighbor, neighbor. Stand, your stand your ground and don't take down. And don't take down. Say it again, neighbor, neighbor. Stand, your stand your ground and don't take down. Don't take down. Yeah. Stand your ground. Now the first thing before you can stand your ground, make sure you're on the right ground. Now don't stand no wrong ground, that's what's wrong today. But stand your ground. Now one may feel a message like this is not befitting, but everything but God have changed. Everything but God have changed. 
And this is why it's imperative that as people of God that we stand our ground. God is looking for people that's got some principles. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Have you noticed, you know, years ago when they were doing the days of the bootlegging and, and whatnot, you know, when they were making all kind of gin and, and bringing whiskey and whatnot in, illegal and all, and, and when they cut all of that out, they've got old films of how they took hatchets and axe and chopped and just drove all that whiskey and stuff down the drain breaking the bottles and pouring it in the toilet and just they took guns and took guns thousands of guns that folks had and they took and dropped them in the ocean you could see them dropping them in the ocean I mean they had principles back there I don't get excited when they said oh they invaded and they confiscated three million dollars on drugs that don't move me one bit because if you notice, you never see what they do with it. You don't see no films of them fleshing it down in the toilet or throwing it in the lake or burning it up. You don't see none of that. They just confiscated it. And you just say, honey, I'm so glad they own their job. That's all you know. Amen. And you just got into, oh, I'm going to tell it. Sometimes, you know, when you get older and older, you just don't care no how. You're going to tell it like it is, you know. And, uh, you know, no backbone, no, no gumption, no backbones in the law. Everybody's tipping toe and don't want to infringe on one another's rights. And folks turning their head, rolling over, playing dead like they don't see what's happening and my God, saying one thing when they know it's another. These are the days we must stand our ground. Amen. God have invested too much in the people of God for them to be sweet and water and soft soapy and soft peddling and, and pussyfooting around. And Oh, you don't like me tonight, but I'm going to beat you hallelujah and if it wasn't for especially those that are really older if it wasn't for what they knew and principles they knew back there they don't have too much to go on today everything when it come down to even being saved now they'll even tell you in some of the altar calls slip your hand or put it back down no one will know and even preachers will tell you, don't embarrass folks asking them if they saved. And, and don't, you know, listen, folks, I wonder where did we get our calling? Where did, where, what ear did we hear from heaven from? These are the days we must stand our ground and don't take down. God is looking for people of God with a conviction. The scripture said Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. That was for you and I. And we don't want the coming and the dying of Jesus to be in vain. He invested too much. It cost heaven too much for people, you understand, to be salt, soapy, and tender foot and no conviction and and how do you believe well this and that well where you going here and there no 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 principles no conviction no you know no stability no backbone like a crowbar these are the days you can't afford to have a spaghetti back now because you're not going to survive the Bible tells us in the 15th Psalm Lord who shall abide show me a true citizen of Zion who shall abide in thy tabernacle and who shall dwell in thy holy hill? And the answer came back, he that walketh upright. Nobody can walk upright if their backbone isn't strong. To walk upright, you got to have a strong back. And I'm convinced these are the days we need backbones like a crowbar that's willing to stand up for something. Because if we don't stand for something, we're going to fall for anything. Some of us is so busy trying to be popular and trying to be everybody's friend until you just become messy and don't have no principles within yourself.
But you're going to have to remind yourself that it was God that called you. And it's God we all got to answer to. From the days of John the Baptist, it haven't just started up until now. The kingdom of heaven suffers violent. And the violent, only the violent, take it by force. John, or rather Luke 16, 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man press it into it. That go, I don't care how much Jesus paid on Calvary, every man press it into it. I don't care how much he laid the foundation and opened up the way. Only the violent is going to take it by force. If you want a share in the kingdom, you must be violent. Now let me explain that word violent. <clears throat> in the book of Genesis, the 6th chapter and the 11th verse, it tells us that the earth was also corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. Now, the word violent here means injustice. The violent in the book of Genesis 6, 11, it means cruelty. It means oppression. But here in my text, the meaning of the word violent means earnestness, to seize by force. Violent here means to strive eagerly and to put forth effort and desperation the kingdom of heaven suffers desperation the kingdom of heaven suffers earnestness the kingdom of heaven to make it in you've got to strive eagerly and you've got to put forth effort in order to make it to the kingdom now these are the words of Jesus I can't help who's coming around talking how easy things are. Jesus says you're going to have to strive earnestly. The Bible even told us in the book of Jude, let us earnestly contend, which means to fight for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. We've tried to erase Satan with certain words out of the Bible. That's why I don't believe in fooling with all these other Bibles. Give me King James any day. Because see, some of these other Bibles is taking these words that put grit in your craw. Now the Bible tells us to strive to enter in at the straight gate. We don't like to hear that word because we feel, honey, that's works. The Bible said, for my sake you kill all the day long. That don't sound good, you know what I mean? The Bible tells us to mortify the deeds of the flesh. We don't like to hear all of that. And the violent take it by force. And we've got to ask God to put within us a holy violent. Endure hardness as a good soldier. We don't like that word hardness. We like everything to be easy and a gravy train with biscuit wheels. But if you want to be strong like you've been telling God to make you strong, you've got to stand your ground. To stand your ground, you've got to have some principles. You've got to have some convictions about you. For we're living in the day now, remember, I don't mean injustice when I speak of violence and cruelty and oppression that's found in the book of Genesis 6, 11. I'm talking about the violence that Jesus was referring to We've got to suffer, it suffers violence, it suffers eagerness, we've got to seize it by force. There's some things you're not going to get from God laying down. You can claim it all you want to and die claiming it. You're going to have to put yourself in the way. You can't lay out of church and lay out of church and, 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 and everything that comes your way, you fall to it and, and yield to every temptation and laying somewhere on the sofa when you ought to be in church and popping your fingers talking about I claim it. God ain't studying you and the devil ain't either. In order for you to be violent, you've got to have that spirit within you. The Bible says no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he first bind the strong man. 
and we must realize the day has come if you want to survive you've got to swim if you don't swim I declare you're going to drown if you don't live I declare you're going to die if you don't win you're going to lose you've got the purpose in your heart I'm a winner you've got the purpose that you've got to even tell your children that stop calling them long heads stop calling them saddle heads Stop telling them their head look like a squash. Even though it may look like a sweet potato, don't tell them that. Even though their nose may be spread it over their face. Even though they fat, even though they long, even though their feet look so long till they look like miniature skis. Don't talk to them that way. You've got to be positive about your children. You've got to tell that child coming up in this mean, unfriendly, unjust world, this cruel world, you can't preach to them weakness. You've got to tell them, look, you a winner. If their last name is Doohickey, you've got to tell them, say, look, Doohickeys don't get checks on their report card. Doohickey don't get failing grades. You're a Doohickey, and I'm expecting the best out of you. You've got to talk positive to your children, and you've got to talk positive to yourself, because this life is running over everybody that's not strong, because the day has come only the strong survive. If you don't win, you're going to lose them. If you don't survive, you're going to perish. You've got to learn how. You've got to learn how to survive. There are people in this life, if you threw them on the North Pole, they would know how to survive. If you threw them in the jungle, they'd know how to survive. If you threw them in the dismal swamp lands, they'd know how to survive. And as people of God, you've got to know how to survive. In other words, I can survive with, I can survive without. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Take your stand and stand your ground. I mean, don't step back one sixteenth of an inch. God is looking for men and women with some principles. He's looking for men and women that's got some stability. That's got, as the old folks say, grit in their crawl. That's got determination. That's not going to let a little thing throw them. A little thing get them down. These are the days as people of God that we must realize that we're fighting a fight. There is a war going on. There is a war going on. And these are the days we must be taught combat. We must be taught how to resist the devil. We must be taught how to hold to the promises of God. We must be taught how to stand still and study ourselves. We've got to be taught how to roll with the punches because the storms of life is going to rise as sure as God lives. You see, the fight is on against principalities. The fight is on against powers. The fight is on against the rulers of the darkness of this world. And the fight is on against spiritual wickedness in high places. The fight is on against evil, sin, and the very devil himself. Oh yeah, they had the devil to contend with even back there. Paul said we had to fight with the beast of Ephesus. And that was a church of Asia that was dwelling right where Satan's sea is. Some of us is living right around the headquarters of the devil. Where the devil is trying to fight you teeth and toenails. But God told me to tell you, stand your ground. Stand your ground. Sometimes the ammunition gets low. But just stand your ground and know that help is on its way. Are you listening to me? The fight is on against your rights. Now every promise in the book is yours when you meet the condition. The fight is on against your right. Salvation is my right. Salvation and healing is my right. Help and eternal life is my right. The promises of God is my right. A closer walk with God is my right. The Holy Ghost is my right. I'm supposed to have it. The power with God is my right. But the devil is determined that you don't get your rights. But you've got to be determined I'm going to get my rights. And I'm purpose I'm going to stand my ground. And devil, if you fight, you better bring your lunch. Because I'm coming at you with everything I got. God, don't you help me here? We must be violent. 
When it comes down to standing on the promises, we must be violent. When it comes down to casting out devils, he didn't say ask the devil to leave. In my name you'll cast out devils. I mean you gotta boot him out. You gotta throw him out because he's determined that he don't go out. Yes, when it comes down to being violent, you've got to learn how to encourage yourself. I mean, it's getting spooky out there, and it's gotten darker out there, and only the strong is going to survive. Now, I can understand if you just got saved, and you're a weak Christian trying to get strong, but I don't understand. You've been saved for 5, 10, and 15 years, and still toddling and wobbling. You ought to go somewhere and spend all night with God and become strong in the Lord. You let too much throw you. You're not strong because you let too much get the best of you. You let too much throw you. You let too many people get you down. You hurt by knowing they're talking about you. You're too sensitive. You carry your feelings on your shoulder. If folk look at you, you think they're talking about you. You go home and get mad and stay. God can't use no coward soldiers. God can't use you, buddy. You need to go on back. When it comes down to standing on the promises of God, and when it comes down to being violent, you've got to learn how to encourage yourself. Some folks will look at you and still don't like you. You can sing and get them happy and they still don't like you. You can preach and they still don't like you. There are people that I've laid hands on and God have healed them and they still didn't like me. I'm here to let you know you got to learn how to become strong if don't nobody like you. Encourage yourself. You got to tell yourself, I'm going to make it. Not I hope I make it. Not I think I make it. And not Lord will I make it. But I am going to make it. Hallelujah. You got to tell yourself that greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. Sometimes you feel bad as a missionary. You feel bad as a expiring minister because you don't have no appointment to preach. That's all right. Take a text and preach to yourself and tell yourself, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be strong. I'm going to survive. I'm a winner and I'm a conqueror. And greater he that is in me than he that is in the world. Can you say glory? Can you say glory? You must be violent when it comes down to taking a stand for God. Did you not know that young, beautiful girl, Esther? She wasn't supposed to go into the king. She was supposed to wait before she went before the king. You couldn't just walk in to see the king. Sometimes it took a whole year. That girl had to purify herself. And it took a whole year before you could walk in before the king. And here this girl, Esther, this Jewish girl, Esther, walked in unannounced. They said, man, girl, she'll chop your head off. You dealing with the king. But Esther says, if I perish, I'll perish. I'm going to see the king. Hallelujah. That's the determination you got to have. I'm tired of spaghetti bats. I'm tired of tenderfoot, box ankle slew footed, pigeon toe folk that don't have no principles. You ought to take this attitude. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. Say yeah. Say yeah. David, time won't permit me when David went out to meet the giant, but David stood his ground. He didn't take down. And I'm here to tell you folks, I know the fight is on. It's on as never before. If we're not going through the tribulation, we sure do feel some sparks from it. We sure feel the aspects of it. It's becoming tough now. Some of you have to fight to stay sane, fight to pray, fight to pass through, fight to go through, fight to be faithful. It's a fight to wait, a fight to hold on, a fight to stay encouraged, 
a fight to stay on your feet, a fight to stay on fire, a fight to stay in the race, a fight to keep your vibe, a fight to keep your mind, a fight sometimes to read your Bible, a fight to go to church, but you've got to tell yourself, I'm a tent to stand, and I'm not taken down, I've come too far, God won't let you fight always, he'll come and give you strength, he'll send an angel of his presence, and see you through, can you say thank you, he's still a cancer killer, he's a tumor dissolver, he's a demon chaser, he's a devil buster, he's a heart fixer, he's a mind regulator, yes, 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 some of us have become a shame, but God is looking for folk that he's done something for. He's looking for folks that's not afraid or ashamed, that realize and recognize if you anything at all, is what the Lord has made you. Hallelujah. We've got to take a stand as a young teenager. I know the peer press is great. I know the peer press is great. But you got to stand as a teenager. You got to stand as a young adult. You got to stand as a man. You got to stand as a woman. You got to stand as people of God. He's looking for people. You've got too much going for you. You've got the Holy Ghost. You've got his keeping power. You've got his word. You've got prayer. You've got his mercy. You got his grace. Why should you fall? Why should you back down? Take a stand and purpose in your heart. I'm not gonna take down, but I'm gonna take a stand in Jesus' name. Can you say glory? Can I tell you something? If you stand up for Jesus, if you take a stand and hold the line, I know the ammunition gets low. I know the ammunition gets low. And look like the satanic forces is surrounding you, trying to besiege you and force you to surrender. But hang in there. You just hang in there. I heard the songwriter said, when in valley low I look, Toward the mountain high and behold my savior there leading him to fight with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low God in me I can see as I onward go we're not alone but I can hear Jesus saying hold the fort I'm coming Jesus lean the steel wave the banner back to heaven grace we will hallelujah you ought to have something down in you that'll hold on when everything is given away to hold on when everything is letting go to keep your wits about you when everybody else is fainting am i right about it the bible said that god knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation trouble is gonna knock at your door but god knows how to deliver the body he knows how to bring you out if you trust him if you trust him you're gonna have to cry you're not weak cause you cry but just get a little cry and get it out your system and drop the tears from your eyes straighten up your face blow your nose look in the mirror straighten out your clothes put a smile on your face and go out the room of your door and say god i refuse to take down yes yes i refuse to take down i refuse to let the devil have the upper hand greater he that is in me god said hang in there and just hold on a little while longer help is on its way help is on its way he's got the ammunition you need he's got the blood bank you need he's got the supplies you need you thought he didn't hear you but i heard you when your voice called me i heard you 
in the wee small hours of the morning. I heard you when you were by yourself. I heard you walking down the gangway. I heard you in the hallway, stepping on the elevator, going to your floor. I heard you on the L train. I heard you on the CTA bus. I heard you in your automobile. Yes! Yes! Hey! Don't take God. Don't take God. You're standing by yourself. But don't take God. Somebody else is standing with you. You don't see him. But he's there. He's there. He was with Daniel in the lion's den. The Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. You may not see him. You may not feel him. But he's there. He knows how to deliver the godly. He knows how to rescue the righteous. He knows how to see you through. He knows how to bite up your pathway. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Woo. I feel like preaching. But my time is almost out. I just got three more minutes. But neighbor, neighbor, I want you to get up from there. Get on up from there. Get up from your juniper tree. Stop growing up like a shame bush. Come out of obscurity and tell yourself, I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to stand my ground. And I'm not taking down. I know too much about it. He's pulled it himself. He's brought me too far. Yes. 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 Hey, glory. God bless you. Bow your head. Bow your head. You got to tell yourself. You're going to make it. You're talking about I'm just a woman. God is just God. I'm just a child. Jesus is just Jesus. He'll see you through. Bow your head. You're about to give up. Don't give up now. Please, for your sake. Don't give up now. Don't turn it loose now. Take what has happened and cough it up as an experience and get over it. Some things you got to throw it out of your mind and keep going. Stop looking for folks to pet you. Get over it and God will see you through. Bow your head. God's going to reinstate you. God's going to give you back your anointing. God's going to give you back your inspiration. Hey, preacher, you forgot that when you're called, you're divinely called. But you got wrapped up, tangled up, and tied up in things. I want you to shake every bit of it off. And go back to your ministry. He'll give you an inside job. Thank God. You're tore up about your family. You're not the only one. But stand your ground. Stand your ground till he fix it. Stand your ground till he settle it. Stand your ground till he turn it. And bring you around. He's able to do it. If you can just trust him. While your heads are bowed. And while your eyes are closed. Draw near to that television. Draw near to the vision. And while you're drawing near to the vision, 
thank God. Put it on the altar now. Put your children on the altar. Put them all on there. Put them on there. Put them on there. Put them on there. Put the bills. Put the finance. Put yourself on there while you're at it. Put the wayward wife. Put the wayward husband. Put them on the altar. It's killing you. It's getting the best of you. It's giving your heart palpitations. It's robbing you of your sleep. Put them on the altar. We're going to pray now. God of heaven, you know, you see, you care. Work it out. The bottom's dropped out of everything in some of these lives. But work it out. To many, it's been a long day in their lives. It's been a long night. The night has been long and restless. But oh, Son of God, work this thing out. Fix it for him. Lift the load. Turn it, Lord. Put the stand in them to be a survivor in these wrecks of times. I know you know. I know you will. Oh, Son of God. You know how much we can bear. You know the load limit. You know the breaking point. Some have come to the junction. Some have come to the end of the line in this matter. But you're the specialist. You specialize in things for impossible. And you will do what no other power can do. Trust him, will you? Trust him. All is not lost. Trust him. You're coming out of it. You're coming out of it. Trust him. If you don't believe it, believe me. Because I believe for you. That you're coming out. Lift your hands all over the temple. Come on, let's praise him. Come on, let's bless him. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, God. at the river you think it's uncrossable are you at the mountain that you can't tunnel through God God's man in the things thought impossible and he will do and he will do say that there are many in here tonight you're suffering with what many soldiers in the armed force suffers with and that's fatigueness where they become fatigued it don't mean when an individual suffers from being fatigued that they're necessarily weak. It just means they've been fighting a long time. Fatigueness is when you become worn. 
not worn sitting down, but worn over the battle. Fatigued and worn over the wars and the conflicts of the same old, same old. Fatigues. You can go through things so long until you got, see the fight is this way. You can get to the place where you just, I don't care, I just don't care. You gotta keep from, you gotta fight to keep from getting there. See? You gotta fight to keep from getting there. You get to the place where I can't take no more and I'm ready to take things in my own hands. And you're looking for something to pick up. You gotta fight to keep from going there. And sometimes things can happen in your life where you can take two alternatives to let it anger you or let it hurt you. And you've let things hurt you till you cried it out. And they seem to think you weak and a coward. So then you gotta fight because you don't want them to feel that you are a coward and that you're weakling. So then you choose to let the thing make you angry. And when it lets you ang get angry, you lose ground because you go too far. I mean, it's a fight to stay sweet at times. Hmm? It's a fight to hold your peace sometimes. I mean that. And especially when you know you're right. You suffer fatigueness. They've been in battle. They're war torn. They're war worn. Haven't had sleep for days. Sometimes they would suffer with what you call trench feet. Because they would have to keep those comeback boots on for days. And sometimes they would be in foxholes, in water, laying in water for two and three days if they didn't want to get shot. And they would suffer trench feet for being in that trench so long and feet couldn't get air and water seeping in that leather. They couldn't just take their shoes off and cool their heels. They didn't know how close the enemy was. Many times soldiers would have to play dead. And one soldier in particular, <laughs> during World War II, that killed and wiped out that two platoon. And he was the only one left and they were coming. And they were just stabbing them with bayonets, making sure they were dead. And he took, he, he wasn't dead, but he was by himself and revved in the old saying a live coward is better than a dead lion. And he just took blood from other soldiers that were, and just splashed it all on himself and made himself look dead. He said that he was holding his breath, holding his breath. And they were just standing looking. He couldn't, he said he couldn't afford, he couldn't afford to breathe. If they saw him moving, they knew. He knew he was going to get that bayonet or get shot. And he was holding his breath and he said, felt like my lungs were just going to burst open. And he was praying. He didn't know God, but he was saying, God, don't let And he was trying to hold his breath till they passed and looked like they were taking their time. Thank God. And when he was getting ready to just look like his chest was going to explode for the lack of oxygen. He said that Japanese turned around and he said he couldn't catch his breath fast because they had a hoodie. And he just, he still almost died. Fear and still holding your breath. Hallelujah. The Bible said agree with your adversary while you're in the way. Thank God. The only one. But he survived. He survived. I want you to know folks that some of you that suffers and have suffered and has been suffering, I mean to the up degree, fatigue, I'm fatigued. 
I'm worn over this matter. You get that way and you stay that way too long, bitterness comes. And when you get bitter, can't nothing nobody say to try to encourage you. God's going to fix it. I know it's the truth, just like he fixes everything else. When you're bitter, that's where you sound. And a lot of times you don't say it, but your heart says it. And God hear your heart talking. God can bring you out of that fatigue. Amen. There's soldiers from the Vietnam War and Korean War. Men that ain't good for nothing. Because their mind has been sight blown and freaked out from those wars. But tonight, just let me do this and we're going to go. God comes to lift you from fatigueness. The fatigueness of waiting. The fatigueness of how long. It wears on you. You're not talking to a God, you're talking to a man of God and a man that loves God. I like to bring out the human side of people. Yes, you're going to become fatigued. And many of you are that way now. Worn from the fight. I don't care how good those boxers are when they get in the ring. And how much they train. They fresh the first round. But that 15 round. They have hit their second, third and all the wind they got left. And they're worn. They put up a good fight, but they're still worn. They're proven they can take it because they're on their feet at the 15 round, but they're worn. Are you listening? A person don't have to be weak. Worn to be weak or weak because they're worn. You can be strong and become worn. But God says, I'll renew your strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But God said, depend on me. I'll renew your strength. Bless you. First, those of you that don't know Christ. Those of you that's out of fellowship with God. Maybe you gave God up because you became discouraged. I tell you what. You, you come on down here first. You come down first and, and get in on the front of this. Yes, you come on and get in on the front. If you a sinner or a backslider, you come first. And let me pray for you. Thank you, Lord. Come now, sinner, backslider. If you know you're not saved. If you know you're not saved. If you know you're not sick, come on. Thank you, Lord. on the brink of eternity. Thank you, Jesus. He is concerned. He is concerned. He's concerned about our young men that's under attack. Our young men are under attack. That's right. They're under attack. This is why so many have fallen into drugs and have fallen into crime. And anything to make a dollar. Jesus is the answer. Oh, yes, he is. Thank you, Lord. God bless these precious souls. 
couples are under attack. Couples will live common law and get along. And then turn around and decide to do it God's way and can't get along. That's the way the devil does. Oh, his doom is soon. God bless you. I'm so happy you came. Turn your life over to the Lord. Now, we always open the doors of the church to people that are already saved that want to become members. But when we make an altar call for those that are not saved, amen, this is what this is about. And behind you are soul winners. And these are people that's their skills how to deal with souls. I'm going to pray for you first. And I'm going to lay hands on you. That God would touch your life. That God would just save and That God would just let things work out for you. Amen. That things will just work out for you. I believe that. You just got to love people. You got to have patience with people. Life has taken its effect on people. And you've got to just love and be concerned about people. You got children that need a father. Fathers with no mess in the church. We need big brothers you know with no funny stuff big sisters and I don't mean big brothers and big sisters and mothers with strings attached you know I, I, I don't mean that just want sons and daughters and big brothers and big sisters and everything for them to remember you on birthdays and all them days no that's not what they're talking about you are your brother's keeper bow your head God loves you God loves you God can work it out God can give you that peace that you need come closer let me touch you let me touch you lift your hands to the Lord Lift, just lift your hands this way, all of you. That's it, that's it. I just want to lay my hands on your head that as they deal with you, that God will just finish the work. Oh, touch this vessel, Lord. Let this be her night of visitation from you. Don't let her be the same. And I believe, Lord, that as we pray for them and as they dealt with that, they will never be the same again because you're coming in and a new life is going to begin they need a new life it's got to be a better way it is Lord oh in the name of Jesus Take them by the handle of their mind. Jesus. All right, soul winners. I'm praying for you. Deal with them from your heart. Let's praise God. All of this service today and yet there's some that's here saying where do I go from here all of this church today and some in your spirit Ellie Hinton where do I go from here I want those of you that know in your heart I'm not gonna ask you to come down but just where you stand and not gonna hold I don't want you to leave. Yes, Elder Hinton, there's been some fatigueness. There's been some fatigueness. I am, some people know how to wear, some people know how to wear 
a, 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 a face, a mask. And it isn't that you're hypocrite, and you got to do that. Sometimes you got to wear a mask to keep folks from wanting to know your business. What you looking so hurried about? Sometimes you just got to smile, because then they want you to, and, and, and if, they, if you're smiling, why are you so happy, honey? Jesus. You ain't lying, Jesus. Sometimes loneliness can bring about fatigueness. Amen. And I want those Elder Hinton, yes, I'm not going to hide it. There's great fatigueness. I'm tired of the same fight. I'm a strong person. And I'm a loyal person. And I can take it. But it's sometimes you can fight better when you're fighting a different fight. But when you're fighting the same fight. The same fight year in and year out. You can take another problem. Because every fight brings about inspiration. And Lord, I'm not asking you to change the fight, but look. You either put this one to an end or whatever you see fit, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I know God hears me. And I know he's going to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, God. The fight. Life is so short. Whatever you can say to encourage somebody, do it. Help them on the way. Folk got enough to contend with. You can't say a kind word, don't say nothing. It don't take much for some folks. And just a kind word. Tell them they look nice. Thank you, preacher. Tell them they look nice. Tell them I'm praying for you and be praying for them. Tell them you missed them. Let them know you care without any strings attached. Amen. Don't go joining yourself to somebody you know that's got some money or getting some money coming and the Lord led you. Don't be no hypocrite. Man, just be real. Bow your head. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Some of you have been really strong. Amen. It takes a strong woman to raise children without a father in this day you know with temptations all around you it takes God you know what can I talk where you live sometimes in raising your family as a young woman or as a young man without companionship sometimes you grow tired you know why you grow weary some preachers ain't gonna say this but sometimes you get a twofold temptation you don't just have that person that's after you to fight but you have your desires in you for that person so you got a twofold fight, a fight within to resist, and then the person itself, they self. And sometimes you can't let them know how you really feel. And some of them, if they knew how weak you were for them, they'd walk up the front of you and down the back of you. And sometimes you've got to just put up a wall. And act deeper than you really are just to get by for this time hoping you be double strong the next time but sometimes you get tired of that same old same old and you don't think the Lord cares you just think all the Lord is interested in is him is you praising him and giving an offering he's concerned 
about you to the minute. I mean, he's concerned about you in detail. That's right. Everything that involves you. You're making. He knows your makeup. He knows what it takes for you. There's some of you that's standing here. You're an over-affectionate person. And that can be dangerous under your circumstances. Some of you standing here, I'm going to tell you what you're about. You're love starved. Love starved. You need a companion in your life. I'm not talking about no mess. I'm talking about God's way. But even though you don't have it, it still don't change the way you feel. As a woman or as a man. And sometimes that can just wear on you. Then it can become a fight. When you see others, couples going their way. And you going as a single person. I've been there to your single room, your single, and you have tried to appease yourself by buying cars and clothes and suits and gold chains and pearls, string of pearls and all that kind of stuff. But it don't take the place of what the inner you is crying for. And you don't think God cares. And it has brought about a fatigueness then you've got to fight feeling that way when the devil is telling you and some young person come up and tell you, honey, you fool. Sometimes you want to prove to them how through you really are. By finishing them and getting through with them by way of the hospital. But tonight, I'm going to tell God about it. And God hears my prayer. He hears my prayer. And some of you stood well. Some of you stood well. Some of you wasn't perfect. I ain't gonna tell it all. You wasn't perfect. But under the circumstances, you stood well. Amen. Now don't mess things up. Because eyes haven't seen. And ears haven't heard. Neither have it entered into the hearts of men what God has in store. See, so you got to realize. Here's what you got to realize. God's got somebody for you tailored made. Amen. See? See? I went to a place and I, I, I fell in there. I fell in that place all dressed up and sharp. He said, Doc, why you have your suits made? I said, do you have your suits made or do you get them off the rack? I said, no, I get them off the rack. Some folks got theirs off the rack. But God says, I'm getting something tailored made for you. <laughs> Some of y'all wish y'all could take him and put him back on the rack. <laughs> but he's got somebody tailored made. You don't have to worry. Just remain steadfast and true. Eyes haven't seen it. And he can, give somebody, he can give you somebody so tailored made until look like the longer you're married, the more you look alike. Huh? He'll give you somebody that'll love you and love your children. And won't try to pull no incest with them. You better go away from here. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what I'm preaching. Father in heaven, we thank you. It's been a long day, but it's been a mighty good day. And one will say, well, Henry, it's easy for you to say, look what he's blessed you with. But before I was blessed with that, look at the lonely years. Hallelujah. The years of tears and running and fighting and wondering what's the use. God let them know it pays their physical needs Lord 
in each and every one of our lives. And we're praying, God, the fear of many that they don't want to run into the wrong person or get tied up with the wrong person. And, and sometimes because of that, they, they miss what you have being extra careful. God, you've got to lead us in a plain path. Some things we've got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. In Jesus' name. Some of us have felt cheated as far as life, not by you, but, but as far as life is concerned. They've preserved themselves. They've kept themselves clean, both physically and spiritually, clean and holy. And the devil is telling them, for what? fatigueness Lord and I don't want to ever feel because you have smiled on me that I'll forget those that's alone and that sinks into loneliness I've been there and Jesus work for them work for everyone under the sound of a voice one way or the other if it's not down that vein, whatever vein it is, it don't have to be along that line. It could be by way of children. Fatigue, my God, worry to death. It hurts to invest so much in our own flesh and blood. And overdo and overprotect, not meaning no harm, but don't want them to go through what we went through and be deprived of what we were deprived of. And sometimes in doing that, they still go off and go wild and become bitter and resentful, hateful. Jesus. And we're made to wonder, where did we fail? Ain't no need of us asking that. Some of us haven't and some of us have. But if we have a heaven, you're going to still have to pick up the pieces fix this fix this congregation let them know your concern we don't want to go wrong we don't get out of things that we get in like we get in order our footsteps that's all we got to say Lord order our footsteps since the steps of a righteous man good man is ordered of the Lord order my footsteps don't let a one slide then sometimes it isn't that we need a companion or a husband or wife sometimes we just need a real pal a real friend no nothing no strings attached just a, 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 a pal a prayer warrior a prayer buddy or just a someone we can trust and love us for us and for not what they can get out of us. No man is an island. No man can stand alone. Stand up in us, Lord. Throw around us your loving arms of protection. The weather's breaking. The trees have budded and the flowers have bloomed. And the, everything is green. Lord places that have been closed from the winter are opening now some are tired and I'm asking you to fix it to work it out save our children save our sons then there's some that stand and say Lord if you would just save one of my sons or just save one of my daughters where one of us can just one of my children can walk with me as we walk with God all of the children are lost and Lord if you just save one two couple of them you got faith to believe the rest of them will come in as the result of that that's where they're standing you can work that out now, Lord, I'm optimistic. I'm positive about what I pray. 
and I'm decreeing what I pray that it will be established thou shalt decree a thing thou shalt decide a thing thou shalt determine a thing thou shalt proclaim a thing thou shalt ordain a thing and it shall be established father dear everything that I prayed every avenue that we pray today I decree in Jesus name that it will open up down every by way of the children by way of saving them by the way of all oh, healing the lonely spot the empty spots the vacuums in the lives the loneliness I decree that this will be established God, I'm decreeing a quick work. I'm decreeing a quick work. In some cases, by the matter of hours. I'm decreeing a quick work. 